I needed a charger, but not just any charger. It had to be safe, but also look exactly the way I had in mind, like something I would love to take apart as a child. Just because how it looks, still affordable, multifunctional, and built from components that I have been on my side for years. The power supply I'm reusing come from an old laptop I used back in school. It only delivers up to 20 volts, but I needed at least 75. To solve the problem, I'm using this DC-DC converter, which can provide up to 120 volts. It comes with a small OLED screen, so lets me adjust the output power. Right now, I'm getting around 90 watts. How that will affect the charging performance? I'll talk about that later on. Before I sit down at the screen to design the project in CAD, I like to start with a rough sketch. No, I'm not a sketch artist or anything, so don't accept anything fancy. But I do have a certain design in mind. You know, the retro sci-fi vibe from the first Ellie movie. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm going for. To be honest, the whole design ended up looking more like an 80s arcade machine than anything sky or creepy. I usually work with Creo for my job, but for personal stuff like this, I go with Fusion 360. It's free, it does the job and it keeps work and personal project nicely separated. Do you have a favorite 3D design software? If you do, let me know in the comments. Or are you more the kind of person who just builds first and lets the plan happen later? I use PETG High Flow for the housing. Sure, ABS is technically better, but PETG doesn't warp, doesn't stink, and won't melt. Good enough for me. All the parts are now prepped and ready for assembly. Honestly, this is my favorite part of any project. The hard prep work is done, and now the fun can begin. A few days ago I was out for a walk and spotted a standard C13 power cable just lying there on the street. So I pick it up, lucky find, right? I'm using it here as a power input cable for this project. The things are weighted for way more currents than I'll need anyway. So perfect fit. To switch the charger on and off, I had picked up a power switch a while ago. But when I designed the case in CAD, yeah, I totally forgot to add a hole for it. Luckily, PTG is way easier to work with afterwards than PLA, so fixing that was not a big deal. Just to be clear though, the switch only cuts the power going from the laptop power supply to the charger board. The power supply itself stays on. I designed the feet so they also act as the mounting points for the DC-DC converter. Two functions, one part. To get the LCD screen to sit cleanly in the housing, I had to bend the pins 90 degrees to the side. That allowed me to solder the wires directly. Why solder them? Well, first of all, it saves space. And second, after the modifications, the original connectors just didn't fit right anymore. Even with good preparations, jumper wires never really want to be soldered properly. But it works well enough. To hide the rough solder joints and insulate them at the same time, I went for my favorite little hack, the hot glue gun. A bit of warmth, a bit of stickiness and everything sealed and safely out of sight. The wet frame for the OLED screen actually turned out pretty well. The mounting, however, still has room for improvement. I was able to screw everything together, but I still had to use a bit of hot glue. If I ever end up making a second version of this charger, that's definitely something I want to improve. Still, I was honestly surprised by how well the top and button halves come together. So, if you've been wondering about the weird rectangular hole, it's actually where the laptop power supply is supposed to go. Will it work with the heat it generates? Well, we'll see. Since the cable position wasn't ideal, I had to drill some new holes. To cover the old ones, I'm using these wet caps. A 
It's not exactly what I had in mind, but honestly, it turned out kind of charming. Our laptop power supply gives us 90 watts. If we want to charge something like my one wheel battery, which runs at 75.6 volts, we simply divide the 90 watts by that voltage. That gives us 1.2 amps. We can now set these values directly. If we need a different voltage for another battery, we just divide the available power by the new voltage. The battery you see here is my custom built one wheel battery. I built it in my last video, so if you are interested in that, feel free to check it out. Otherwise, thanks for watching. In the next video I'll continue with the one wheel project.